You were relatively positive on the possibility that China and the U.S. would get back together at the negotiating table. You didn't say it would happen within weeks, but you did expect that they would reach a deal eventually. Do you still feel that way? I do, although the, the agreement might be to suspend tariffs and resume negotiating rather than have a full-blown ultimate agreement. As I said then, and I would repeat here, uh, you, the United States has the advantage over the very short term simply because their exports to us are so much larger than ours to them. But over the medium and long term, China has the advantage because the authoritarian nature of their regime, a ruler for life, no elections, uh, and the classic China long view allows them to wait us out and, 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 uh, uh, and we don't have the patience that they do. Uh, and it's not a comment about President Trump. That's a comment about the American political system and governmental system. So uh, I do think there'll be an agreement, but I think the chances now that it's in effect a moratorium on tariffs and a commitment to resume negotiating or something like that is more likely than an ultimate agreement. Because I think what's now happened, including in the last month since we, we saw each other, is that um, China has uh, dug itself in. And you see that in terms of Xi's visit to the site of the beginning of Long March. You see that in their rhetoric over the weekend in terms of the paper they released, blame the United States. And it's becoming harder for China to agree, although I think it was always hard, to the changes we want from the point of view of intellectual piracy, mandated technology transfer, and so far, so forth. So I stick with what I said. I don't think this is going to last very long. And again, that could be weeks and weeks, but it's not going to be many months. And if you look at the uh, comments Steve Leisman just made uh, and the marking down of GDP forecasts that he alluded to, and that's going on everywhere, you look at the 10-year, 2.10 in round numbers. You look at the, you know, the obvious reversal of the outlook for the Fed right. in terms of market expectations. Those are all bearish signs. Now, President Trump yeah. is going to run, and I heard Jared Kushner recently lay out how they're going to run. Uh, the core of the entire campaign is going to be, quote, jobs are up, wages are up. Now, there'll be a lot of other elements, too, but that's the beginning of it. So they uh, aren't going to risk uh, the, uh, you know, killing growth and maybe even going into negative growth uh, with the election coming up. So is this going to last many, many months? The answer, I believe, is no. Yeah, well, listen, Friday's action, though, when it comes to that tariff on Mexico, would certainly seem to be saying otherwise in terms of concern about growth and or the stock market. Roger, well, that, you speak David, to, that's you speak a very, to many that's companies. That's a completely different issue, though. Uh, it that's is, and I want to get your... I want to get your opinion on it, but first I'd love you to answer this question because it's specific to the work you do every day. What are you hearing from CEOs, from other decision makers in terms of their willingness to continue to make those kinds of decisions in terms of spending money? Are they pulling back at all? Not yet. Uh, and you, I think the, uh, the business community, as I read it, and it, you know, it's very difficult to be declarative on what the business community thinks because there's no precise answer to that changes every day like anyone else. But my reading would be, um, so far, there ha not enough time has passed since the onset of these China trade tensions for businesses to change their own forecasts very much and change their own attitudes towards CapEx and inorganic, you know, things like M&A. Not enough time has passed, so the answer is that it hasn't particularly changed. However, there is anxiety, uh, and give or take half the people I talk to think uh, that what I said earlier will be the case, that this won't last that long. By the way, some people think the tariffs on Mexico won't ever be imposed. And then there's another group, of course, that says, this doesn't look good at all, and pretty soon I'm going to have to re react to it. But so far, not yet. Which is worse, the tariffs on Mexico or the tariffs on China in terms of the impact for U.S. consumers and our economy? Well, I think as a matter of the numbers, the, the tariffs on Mexico would be worse in terms of consumer impact here in the U.S. But um, the prospects for an agreement there, I mean a real agreement, would seem to be much higher. So that this view that maybe the tariffs will never be imposed on Mexico reflects the expectation that there can be an agreement. 
Um, so uh, if, if each of them went on a long time, the Mexico side of this would be worse for the American consumer. But the chances that the Mexico situation does go on a long time, I think, are lower than the, the China side of this. But, I mean, the Mexico thing came out of nowhere, seemingly, Roger. Doesn't that throw you a bit off balance? Doesn't that throw business a bit off balance as well? Well, I have to be honest. I, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, and uh, you, we all know that virtually every one of the president's advisors, ex-Stephen Miller, uh, uh, opposed it. Uh, and um, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, and we'll see how Mexico responds. Mexico has a big incentive to, uh, I mean, a very big incentive to make some agreement, which will, in fact, get the numbers on crossings, border crossings down uh, and get the, uh, the threat of these tariffs off the table. But we'll see what happens. I think you may see something, though, over the fairly short term. I mean, we all know there's a Mexican delegation coming to Washington shortly. Uh, we'll see.